welcome, welcome. This is Juma and my co-host, Dr. Sophia Lin, and we are Leaf Style, the intersection of education, culture, and cannabis. And today we have a really special guest. Introduce them, Dr. Lin. No problem. It's my pleasure to introduce our newest reality television star, musician, father, and cannabis advocate. Welcome to the show, Brandon Gomes. What's up? What's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys for having me today. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us, and we're going to talk about the reality of cannabis. So let's get into the reality. Right from the top, how did your relationship with cannabis begin? My relationship with cannabis began, you know, just being just being transparent, began at an early age. Um, you know, I, uh, I was always, I guess, just interested. You know, growing up, I was curious. I was curious just seeing, you know, uh, I'd see, like, the smell, you know, just in, when I'd go out, like, either different people that were older than me. And, and then I, uh, I just was interested in it, curious, you know. And at that time, everyone was, oh, don't do that. That's a horrible thing. Boom, boom, boom. And I think that almost led to be wanting to try it more. <laughs> but uh, I uh, began at an early age, and I say uh, I just was introduced to it, you know, high school, and have been using ever since. Um, but uh, I just began a passion over it just because of uh, everything around it. I just, I just, I just love the plant. I, I built a passion for it early age. We love that. We love how you've gone from recreational use to now transitioning into your advocacy work and becoming a medicinal user and really understanding the power of the plant. Tell us about that Absolutely. journey a little bit. Yeah. So like I was saying, you know, uh, obviously when I was in, in, you know, younger and I, I was, it was not met, it wasn't medicinal in Florida yet. I don't think it became medicinal in Florida until yeah, several years ago, but, um, yeah, 2016. Mm -hmm. 2016 exactly i remember going to true leaf and i uh and i was almost like amazed i was like wow i could, I could go in here and i could get you know it was cost it was uh wax and oil and concentrates at the time mm -hmm. but just uh going from you know using the plant using it recreational and then knowing that i myself have a platform i have a name and there's a way to do it it's just a couple extra steps you got to figure out how to do it and do it legally and I, that was a big, that was a big, uh, I really wanted to do that. You know, I wanted to show people that, you know, there's a way that you can do it. And I got into it, uh, true leaf and I met a doctor, Dr. Barry Gordon, mm -hmm. compassionate cannabis. And he, uh, you know, we've talked and I got my license to go buy it legally. And from that point on, I just been really trying to focus on the medicinal use of it, showing people the, the benefits in it, showing people that, you know, me as a platform, I can use it and I can still go get my work done and I'm not just lazy, like the stigma around it. So that was sort of a little bit about it. I could talk all day. But what, are you born no, and raised in Florida? I... Yeah, I was born, I'm born and raised in Florida. I'm a Siesta Key native, born and raised in Sarasota, Florida. Yeah. Wow. So you're Good. really a native of the show from the city of the Siesta yeah. Key show. You're actually from that area. Yeah. <laughs> We're thinking about Yes, no. So I um I was born and raised in Sarasota, Siesta Key, and when the show came around, I, I lived in New York for two and a half years. When I was 17, 18, I moved to New York for two years to pursue modeling, acting, and music. And when I moved back, uh, the show, one of my friends, they were like developing it and they were putting the pilot together and I moved back and they just reached out to me and were like, Hey, do you wanna, you know, come to a dinner with us and see what po possibly we could do, you know? Um, because we were friends and uh it just worked out like that. I just, next thing you know, I met the producers through E1 and MTV and they loved me. We loved them. I was friends with everybody that was already, you know, in the works of being on the show. And it just happened really naturally. Out of An organic, hometown. yeah, organic yeah. relationship for sure. For definitely. Exactly. So they've tapped into your age range in Siesta Key because there's a lot of college students and, and it's really like yeah. a hangout area. So they've really tapped into that culture down there because you can't find that everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the thing. There is like a, there is a lot of, uh, you know, college students and, 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 and people of my age. Mm -hmm. um, however, Siesta Key, Sarasota is most of the southwest Florida area is like a retirement place. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of... Um, 
people here that come to retire, right. but then there still is, you know, people like in my age range that are here. So it really gave people the, the age range here, the demographic, something to look up to, you know? Right. Uh, right. There's kids here, same age on a TV show that live in the same town. You might see them at the gym. You might see them at the ice cream store or whatever, you know? So it's cool. What season is this for you on Siesta Key? It's season four. So we're currently filming right now for season four and, uh, the winter episodes will probably come here at the end of the year. Great. Now, do they let you use cannabis on the show? So, uh, they don't as far okay. as like, you know, um, I, I can't show up to a set and just be using cannabis right. openly and everywhere. <laughs> but even though you're a card I, holder, like regardless. Since I have, exactly. Since I have my card, you know, there's ways around it where I don't, I try to just be a pleasure to work with and I try not to. Mm -hmm get too comfortable in every situation, even though I have my card and I'm a big activist of the plant and I want right. to push that. I still, I definitely use, I mean, it's reality TV, so it's stressful. Right. So right. I definitely have to, <laughs> I definitely enjoy using so I can stay calm through all of the, you know, the high stress let's, moments. Let's and, talk uh, about that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. It's, it's, let's, let's talk about that a I little mean, bit. Just as being on a reality television show and sort of life in a fishbowl, your real life, as, as you told us, you're actually from this area, Siesta Key. So having your real life displayed on television, talk to us a little bit about any pressures or potential anxiety you may feel being in that fishbowl. Yeah, so being on, you know, TV, putting your whole life, your personal life, all out to the public, um, constantly filming, constantly having people that watch the show judge you based on events that happen on TV or, or you know, the atmosphere around the TV show. Um, it's a blessing at the end of the day. I'm very happy to be in position of where I'm at, but it comes with drama. It comes with pressure. It comes with stress. It comes with public humility. Um, so with the anxiety with uh i guess always filming and always having the pressure of you know and that anything that happens at any moment might make it to the tv that's where you know i like to stay balanced i don't like to stay too high stress that's why i use cannabis that's why cannabis keeps me calm to not care about some of the things and some of the pressures that are involved with being on TV, are involved with being in the music industry and stuff like that. So um, it really keeps me level, it keeps me balanced. And I try to make sure that no matter what, um, like I said, I'm always a pleasure to work with. I show up, I do my job. Um, I don't let too much of the pressure get to me to stop doing what I'm supposed to do and realizing what I'm here for, my mission, my vision. And cannabis helps out with all, like threading all of that together. I love that. I love that. Tell me a little bit about the synergy between your music and cannabis. I realized you just dropped on Chop Shop the Skate about a week ago. So that video is fire. Yes. And you see a I, lot of you your so attitude, a lot of your fashion in there. Like, tell us a little bit about that synergy. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, I appreciate you for listening to the song. Shouting Always. it out. Chop Shop featuring Skate out on all platforms. Um, with music, right? So with music, sometimes I'll be in the studio for 12 hours. You know, I'll come in the studio and it'll be bright as day out. And when I leave, the sun will be down and you won't even realize it. So cannabis just, ha I feel like when I'm in a lot, when I'm sitting down, because a lot of time, like I have the a studio right behind me, like I'll just be trying to make a beat and the synergy between cannabis, at least with me, I can only speak with me personally, the synergy between cannabis and music for me, it goes, it goes hand in hand just for the fact that I'm always sitting down, I'm doing sometimes tedious work, trying to learn how to make a beat. And when I'm using cannabis, it takes that time away of I'm sitting here for seven hours, it just flies by and I learn so much. And as like, cannabis to me, it always got me through anything that I was going through, it got me to just keep going, you know, keep going, keep doing it. Don't worry about the current situation or why you can't figure something out right now. Just keep going and learn it. 
and for, it's really helped me out with everything creatively. You know, when I when I put videos together, I just sit back and I try to be still, and I'll, I'll smoke and just and, and plot on how I want the video to look or how I want the music to sound. Right. There's a lot of different ways that it helps me. And music, I love how you all... speak to how it unlocks the creativity in you, but also the productiveness of you. Because a lot of people yes. have that stigma that when they consume, it's going to make them less productive. And you really talk about how it pushes you through your journey and helps you to finalize the project and really see it through rather than it leaving yes. you still, you know? So that's really key for everybody to know. Juma, jump yeah. right in. No, really no, I, 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 Absolutely. I wanted to just piggyback on that. I mean, you, you mentioned that you were going to speak for yourself around music and the synergy with cannabis, but clearly <laughs> almost beyond anecdotal evidence, there's clearly incredible synergy with music, um, and cannabis and, and creativity. Um, but I thought it was interesting about the productivity as well, because oftentimes the narrative is people are lazy and they're not uh, productive. Clearly you're someone that has your hands in many things. Um, so talk yeah. a little bit about Absolutely. how cannabis is able to keep you sort of focused and, and productive. And now we will talk about being a new father. Absolutely. Yeah. Cannabis. So there's always been the stigma in the industry, right? Um, there's always been the stigma around, around marijuana that, you know, if you use it, you're going to become less productive. If you use it, you're going to, your, your, your physical hygiene, your image is all going to go down. Uh, you know, like you'll stop caring about things. That's always been a stigma that, and growing up, I mean, just to be completely honest, growing up, you know, like, like my mom would tell me, you know, like if you keep using, you know, if you keep using cannabis, like this is what could probably happen. A lot of people in my family, a lot of older um, family members and not calling out my family, but older people that I looked up to would tell me that a lot. And it really, it would sort of get me upset. Cause I'd be like, no man, like I'm going hard. Like you don't understand. Right. I'm in, I'm up all night. So 9am literally just making music. And it's hard to explain that, but be with for me like i said for me personally i can only speak for me because i feel like it comes down to who you are you know mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if just if you use the plant it comes down to who you are what you stand for what you want to do in life and i like i've been using for a long time i've smoked for a long time and it keeps me productive because it puts me in a state of um like i get i get real conscious about where i want to go and it just keeps me in that higher conscious level. I have to keep going hard. I can't stop. Sometimes if I'm, I'll get distracted, you know, if I'm just sitting around, but it's smoking became a thing to me that I do as I'm being productive. Mm -hmm. You know, you are breaking, you're breaking generational curses. You know, you're yes. really redesigning how your family's image of cannabis is not just for you, exactly. but for family members that previously had one conception of it or one ideal of it. And now you're able yeah. to present a new model to your son. Tell us about how that Absolutely. journey has been. Yeah. Shout out my son, Quincy. I love him. Shout out and, Quincy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's the thing, you know, I had, uh, I had Quincy and, you know, bef when, before I had Quincy, I was, you know, still going hard, figuring things out. But when I had Quincy, it really aligned sort of mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to do it for. And um, Quincy, gives me, he gives me so much inspiration and motivation behind everything I'm doing, every hustle, every outlet I'm doing. And me as a father now, I use, I mean, I smoke, I use cannabis every day. So... I just want to show him more than just what I do or what I'm, I'm using, I'm smoking, whatever it is. I want to show him that by example, look how hard daddy's going, Quincy. Right. Look what daddy's doing for us, for you, for him. It's all, that's what I, that's what I stand for. You know, as a kid, I always looked up to people what they were doing. Um, uh, for or as I trying to go, as a kid, I always looked up to people and what they did. And yeah. you know, yeah. if they thought cannabis wasn't a good thing, then, you know, I just, I respect you for that, but I don't, I use it and it makes me go harder. And I just want to show Quincy that, you know, whatever you do, as long as you're going hard within your means, like obviously I'm not doing right. anything else. Right. If, you, if you use cannabis, 
Just have a vision, know what you want to do. And you're so productive with it. You're showing him all these different hats that you're wearing and how you're navigating this entire industry and killing it on the TV side, on the music side, personally. All of those visions that you have are going to transpire, and he's going to be able to see that for sure. And, speak, exactly. and speaking tell of that. Tell me what you think about. Let me, let me oh, I was just going to say, there. tell me what you think about people in our age. Yeah, uh-huh. getting, getting their cards. Sorry, Juma. No problem. Getting their cannabis cards. I was going to just try to emphasize because a lot of people in your age range, they're using cannabis, but they're mm-hmm. not using it advocately or, or responsibly. No. And they're not don't have their cards there and they're not medical card holders, and especially in the state of Florida. Having a record of cannabis on your, you know, judicial record that can yeah. hurt you for the rest of your career in so many different ways. And now that we have this medical program instilled in Florida, do you talk to your friends about getting their cards and being advocates and, you know, just doing it responsibly so that you're, you're able to really make sure that you're setting yourself up for life to be able to use at the power you want to with the plant, but also with the responsibility of not making sure that you don't have any issues with the law, issues with financial, you know, funding later, governmental issues, just kind of being more of an advocate in that age range. Because I don't see as many people with that responsible decision-making to get their cards in Florida. How do you speak to that? Yeah, I see. I mean, I still have a lot of friends that, you know, they buy their cannabis in the street. Um, You know, I, I know a lot of friends that just don't even know possibly where to go get their license. They think it's too hard to get a license. They don't know a doctor. And that's why it's so important for me. And that's why I'm really trying to lead the way amongst mm-hmm. this generation of showing people that you could use cannabis, you could be an advocate of it, you could do it legally, you could be legally medicated. And I'm currently trying to build a lifestyle brand focused on a strain. Um, I won't speak too much on that because I'm in the early workings of it, but I'm trying to build a lifestyle and the lifestyle is pretty much, you know, stopping the stigma, showing people that you can be productive and smoke, um, getting people in my age range legally medicated, licensed, show them where they can go. And then for big votes like this one right now, regulate Florida and other things, get people in my age range that aren't educated on that involved. So I just want to be a leader in my demographic, not just my demographic, but in the industry of showing and being a, a leader and giving examples of how you can do this. Absolutely. And clearly you're already I a leader that. And, and really maximizing your platform. So are we going to see something like how Bieber got the, 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 the peaches? Are you going to have your own strain, your chop shop strain? What are you doing here? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So I'm working, I'm, I'm, I'm working right now on getting my own strain. The biggest thing to me, I'm a Florida boy. Talk about you know, it. I'm a Florida boy. I, 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 I'm trying to build a strain and do it here in Florida. You know, and I know Florida, there's been a lot of rules, been a lot of regulation. It's been really hard for the cannabis industry to get pushed here and in Florida. So I want to try to partner and I'm talking, I'm like, I'm, I'm really trying to get in. I'm trying to get a strain on the market, but not just the strain. Cause it's not just about the products, it's about the atmosphere and the lifestyle behind it. And the least I'm style. talking to True Leaf right now. Yeah. Leaf style. <laughs> so I'm talking to True Leaf right now. I love True Leaf's vision. I love their mission, what they're trying to do their professionalism and I'm talking to them right now about building uh, a lifestyle brand and how we can work together on um, getting a strain and just pushing the education around the plant, pushing the uh, regulation and showing people my age range. I looked at my insights the other day on Instagrams. It's like from 13 to like 30 and um, 92% women which is amazing because there's a lot of things that I'm just like, I'm like, wow, that's who's watching me. Let me be a leader for them. Mm. That's who's watching me. When I was 13 and I started using cannabis, it was like, all right, I'm about to go to hell. Or I'm about to, you know, <laughs> I'm about to end up homeless or something, right. you know, and that's what, that's really how people made me feel. So I want to show that 13 year old that is beginning to use cannabis and mm. lost in the industry. I want to show them that there's somebody like me out there that can lead you how to, do it right. That's thriving. You know, That's actually thriving. But I want to I want to talk about yes. that a little bit because I'm a parent. Doctor is a parent is talking about breaking generational uh, curses is. Have you thought about how you and I know Quincy is young, but this is something I battle with. Yeah. Have you thought about mm-hmm. how you're going to sort of 
educate your son around the plant, the understanding of the plant? Have you even thought about that? Yeah. Because it's something I, I battle with often on how presenting it to my, my young ch kids and how they deal with it as they speak to their other friends and et cetera. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's a huge question. That's a really good question because I don't smoke around Quincy. I, I tr like, he's really young. I don't want to be careless with it. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a big thing behind doing it right and being careless with it. So I'm trying to, you know, I, like I said, I'm in the cannabis industry. There's going to be so much that kids are so smart. They see so much. So I don't want to hide it. That's what I feel like some of my parents, my parents did with me. They sort of try to hide it and punish me for it and this and that. But I just want to lead by example, keep it, keep it away from him, not do it around him and not be careless with it. Cause he's looking up to me. He's looking up to me and I want him to see that dad is a, the guy that you want to be like when you start using it. But I think as he gets older and who knows, 10 years from now, my son's going on a year and I, almost a half right now. So 10 years from now, it might be like tobacco. Mm -hmm. Cannabis might be like tobacco, who knows? But mm -hmm. I just want to show him that, you know, if he wants to use, um, when he decides to do that, you know, you can talk to me about it and you see how I did it. So you don't have to sneak around and you don't have to, um, you know, take the route and the, the, the confusion that I took until I got my place in the industry. Well said, that's so powerful because you don't even know how many parents I have 30, 40, 50 years old that are still closeted smokers that have their medical yeah. cannabis card and are afraid to, to use in front of their child, whether it's tinctures or ointments or salves or bongs or smoking or vape, like they're afraid to do it because they don't know how to have that conversation with their children. Yeah. So I applaud you. That's a huge step. And it's awkward. But I mean, our, our kids are seeing the so same sex, things we're seeing. Right? Sex is ah, awkward. Yeah, Drugs sex. are awkward. Right, right. Child it, trafficking is awkward. All these conversations, all you know, stalking and, and also uh, what do they do at school where they are battling each other, you know? Bullying. They're, bullying, they're so all that. Bullying. All these conversations are hard, but they're necessary. And the longer we and wait to do it, the worse it is. Yeah, their priority, your kids are already experiencing things every day and they're seeing everything we're seeing, if not more, they're seeing more right. because they're sometimes smarter than us in, in like this media and stuff like that. Yeah, so they're real really, time. It's really it. big. Yeah, it's big on showing them first, leading by example and having those awkward conversations. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm trying to, he, my kids a year and years have <laughs> changed. So once he gets there, I got, I still have a lot to learn. I don't want to act like I have all the poise and everything, but I have a lot to learn. I'm just trying to do it right, lead by example. Absolutely. That's all we Absolutely. ask for, that's all we ask. Yep. And now speaking on that yeah. is, you said sort of your, the way your relationship started and sort of just the interest in, in the cannabis and being more involved and grow over time with the plant. Do you see a real distinction? How do you see the distinction between your recreational and your medicinal use? Do you see a distinction? Is it one and the same? How do you view that now? So, I mean, I, like, for instance, I go to California a lot. Um, I have a, a, a business in California, and that's where a lot of, like, my engineers for music are. So I go there a lot, and I see the, tip, the distinct difference in industries from California to Florida. And in California, it's recreational as it can be. Mm. You know, you could go in the store. You could get all the packaging with all the cookies and everything on it and go right outside the store and smoke a blunt in front of the police station if you wanted to, you know, not saying that's wise or smart to do, but that's how California is, you know, over here, it's medicinal. And the thing about medicinal is, you know, when you go in the dispensary, you know, the plant or the, the whatever you're picking up, if you're picking up a eighth of this, or if you're getting a tincture, or whatever you're getting, you know, it's legit, you know, it's something that's going to be actually the strain it says it's going to be, it's going to be grown fantastic and you're getting what you pay for but um like i said i think uh we're not at a place rec recreationally in florida yet where people are i guess motivated enough to go get the license to buy legal legal cannabis or motiv motivated enough to go to the dispensary you know some people are still black market mm -hmm. and me personally i've used recreational i've used uh um, medicinal and I mean I like I like where Florida because 
bias. I'm a Florida boy, but I want to see it go sort of where California's at or go to that area. And I want to be a leader. in it. Right. You right. are. You definitely are. And with the way the market looks right now with cannabis being laced with ketamine and fentanyl and, you know, all different kind of additives to it. It's it's only proper to do it medicinally if you're in a state that allows you to do that, because there's so many ways that it can go left. And those yeah. recovery from using those products are, are completely different. You know, exactly. I see it in the ER. So it's it's really crazy. That's insane. I, like, uh, what is going on? There's people lacing marijuana with fentanyl. And that that's just that's scary to me. It should that's be. why, you know. It, it, anyone out there listening or anyone that I can impact, I just go to go get licensed to go to the dispensary, you know, reach out to me, reach out to Juma, Dr. Lynn, anyone, you know, re, it's it doesn't make sense to um, put yourself at risk like that, you know, when it's not that hard to go do it right. Um, like I said, I'm I've I've done, I've done the black market. I've done the, the medicinal done all that, you know, but it's just. It's a matter of just doing it right. Where the where this where it's going with it? Why not get it now? Right. And still, there's there's things that you get in trouble. Still, you can still get in trouble if you're rolling around with like marijuana that's not from the dispensary. You still get in trouble. That's still not fun. You're still gonna have to go spend money on lawyers. You're still gonna have to go to court. It's still illegal in the state so, of Florida. It's decriminalized in a lot yeah. of cases, but it's still illegal. So we always gotta right. remember that. Are you a flowers? Are you are you strictly yeah. flowers? How how do you consume primarily? I I love flowers. So I mean, I think that's the way the plant is grown. Um, I'm a nerd with the flowers, <laughs> man. I love I love looking at them. I love smelling them and distinguishing the different characteristics between two plants, like indica or sativa or different flavors. I, I love flower, and um, but don't get it wrong. I have a puffco peak. I love uh, some of the like um, live resin that True Leaf sells, and I've had edibles, and I've had all sorts of different things. But I love flower. I'm a big indica guy as well. So, so I know you're working yeah. on a potential strain. Tell us what that your ideal strain yeah. would 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 be. How would it best serve your needs? What would it do? So the so to me, um, there's there's two things to it. You know. Um, as far as just the strain, if we're talking about just the flower, um, I really want the flower to be a a lot of strains I see. A lot of strains I see are true to true to one thing. You know, if it's OG, it's true to OG. If it's true to a sativa, it's true to sativa, or that's that. I a big strain that I love is like the candies, the gelatos, the skittles. They're really tasty 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 ones that smell like candy like really right. smell like candy right and i want to i want to push something like that in the market but the atmosphere behind it i want to push the um stopping the stigma i want to push the getting people licensed i want to push just keeping people out of trouble um i want to push all those things behind it so it's more than just the strain of me it's a lifestyle and but the strain that those are my favorite strains i love gelato uh you know that i really want my strain to be soup something like candy like you want to just eat it you know? so you're involved from the stem to the production to the packaging to the finally making it on the shelf process you're involved in every step of the vertical integration process with this it sounds like yeah well as much as i could be involved i want to be involved you know because to me like i said it's a passion um, I, I, it's not, it's not just for profits, right? It's not just to get a product or get another business to me. Marijuana is a passion to me. I would, I like, I would like to be there throughout the whole process, growing it, naming it, <laughs> crossbreeding it, um, packaging it, putting, it, I would love to do all that, you know, cause that's how, that's how I think it is better to be involved all the way along the process. That's like with the music. I like being involved all the way from production all the way into the release of it. So that way you can really say I put my all into it. And that's mine. I it's not somebody else's thing. That's mine. I, I did I, that's everything I like, you know. And and speaking on that, we can hear about your passion about the plant. Talk to us a little bit about your your work and your advocacy work with Last Prisoner Project. 
and why that is so important to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, yeah, first of all, shout out Last Prisoner Project. Um, as I uh, as I got more followers, as I became a more prominent person, just in my city, um, with a platform, uh, you know, um, and and people really looking, at, they look at me, I, and I'm watched, you know, and uh, it became a big a big thing for me to involve myself with people and companies and organizations, nonprofits that their vision is in line with my vision. And um, Last Prisoner Project was something I've always seen through True Leaf, through uh, Sunshine Cannabis would be involved with them. I would see a lot of people that I look up to reach out to them and be involved with them. And when I reached out to Last Prisoner Project, I reached out to them and I was like, hey, you know, um, this is what I'm doing. I wonder what my platform, how can I help? And uh, they pretty much told me their whole, their whole platform, what they're doing. And that means so much to me because the Last Prisoner Project stands for getting people with cannabis crimes out of prison or rebuilding their life after people have got out of prison or people involved with just cannabis crimes. And you'll go to, you'll, you'll go to dispensary and then you'll pass the dispensary and then not too far down the road will be like a, a jail or a prison. And it's like, you know, there's people sitting in this jail or this prison right now for, you know, selling marijuana, but right up the block is a dispensary. And as much as I can use my platform to bring shed, shed light to someone's story or uh, help someone rebuild themselves, I'm all about that, you know, because, I mean, I can understand what it's like. And if someone just, just having to start over, I'd like to be the guy to help them out with that. You're obviously right. super passionate about it. The fact that you reached out to them, most people in your yeah. position, over 300,000 followers on Instagram and other yeah. social media platforms, they wait for those companies to come to you, you know, especially yeah. with everything you're doing. You reached out, you took the first step, you made the initiative, you follow through. That's the kind of advocacy yeah. work we love to see happening. Exactly. It's huge to me, you know, I, that's Bridger Project. They're, they're doing so much good things down there that if I could make a post, if I could do a story, if I could reshare something that would bring that much more eyeballs to someone's story. That's not too much work for me to do. I'm down to do more work to try to help somebody out, you know? And um, that it just is, is a huge part of my brand and what I'm trying to do right now. That, and there's another one called uh, um, Minorities for Medical Marijuana. Um, that's, they're that's friends of Lee that, Style for sure. Look and at that. Brandon. Yeah, so I'm, they're cool. And I reached out to them. We're working on getting a brand ambassador for, uh, deal right now. Um, but another thing, you know, they they, sh- they, sh- they hit me with some statistics and I was like, wow, like, you know, uh, African-Americans are like eight times more likely to get arrested for marijuana than um, so, uh, th- than someone that was white or something. I was like, wow, that's crazy. You know, so I'm educating myself by just trying to reach out to these companies because, you know, I can never learn enough. I could never know enough. So I just want to educate myself and place myself and leverage our relationship. Brandon, Brandon, I have to salute you. I mean, as a young man, seriously, you, you are, you are way you. above the curve. Like appreciate I really it. appreciate you just honestly. yeah, sharing the story. Yeah. Thank you. Your passion comes through your dedication, your advocacy. I, I really, you're changing the narrative on reality stars, right? <laughs> so, yeah. <appreciate laughs> seriously. Definitely. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, any, this would have, any, if I have a platform, if I could do anything, I want to do something good. You know, right. I, I can, I can go as far as, you know, y'all want to let me go, but I want to involve everyone and help build other people up. That's big to me. You know, it's not all just about me. It's not all about profit or just me. But that's great. Cause some everyone. people talk it, but you're clearly walking it as well. So again, salute you. And again, we like to finish. We like to wrap up with, our question this season, what does free the culture mean to you? Free the culture. Free the culture to me means, uh, you know, a lot of the culture that, you know, people are sitting in jail for right now. A lot of the culture that people, you know, haven't been noticed for, haven't been credited for um, in this industry, at least in, there's a, lot more that they could stand for but in this industry there's 
so much stuff going on right now. So much dispensaries popping up. There's so much big companies taking over and they're doing it all based on stuff that we built, stuff that people 30, 40 years ago have built up and are serving life sentences for right now or, um, you know, pushed out or told that this is not something that will ever happen. Stigma. And I think free the culture is just, you know, free the culture. Let, let the real, let the real out. You know, let and, the real uh, out. Let's let the small guys win too. Let you know. Let it. Let let us. Let us all go up. That's right. Thank you. Thank it. you. Yeah. Doctor Lynn, any last Absolutely. questions here? Brandon, hit it. Honestly, you're such an exceptional young man. Like seriously, if Thank everyone you. could just take just a portion of what you're trying to do beyond yourself and your sense of community. Um, that would just make all the difference in how people operate in this world, you know, because everything that we do Absolutely. is not just to touch other people, but um, we want to make sure that we're leaving a lasting impact and a legacy, especially now that yeah. you have a son to look up to. Um, you want to make yes. sure that your legacy is branded and initialed and, and cemented in everything that you're doing. And we could see that we look forward to following your journey. Mm -hmm. Personally, if we can help you in any way possible, please let us know. Yeah, you guys keep doing what you're doing. That helps me out all the way. And uh, I appreciate you having me here today. Looking forward to where the future holds for us. Thank you. And what's next, Chop what's Shop? What's the next step? Yeah, let's talk to Chop yeah, Shop. Yeah, Chop Shop is out. What's, what's next? next? Yeah. What's, what's next is, uh, so I just dropped Chop Shop. The video is out too right now. What's next is, you know, I'm just, I'm currently trying to learn how to produce music. I've always rapped. I've always, I could all sung, um, but I'm trying to learn how to produce music right now and, get, and indulge more in the music, you know? I told myself, like, I made it to the NBA. I don't want to just have a shot. Right. I want to be able to drive, and I want to be able to play defense too, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to just be in music just knowing how to rap. I want to know how to produce, maybe play an instrument. And what's next is I'm thinking an album or a tape, you know, to you know, give somebody a solid body of work to go off. And, um, man, there, there's so much up next. But right now, like, Right over there is my laptop or my keyboard, and I'm just learning how to produce right now. And what's next? A whole lot. All right. We you love know? it. <laughs> and we, we believe you. <laughs> Yo, was that Chop Thank Shop? You. The Chop Thank Shop? You. Did you, did, was that filmed in Cali? Chop Shop was filmed in yeah. Cali. At a, uh, so there, there was this mechanic shop that was like um, COVID and COVID-19 mm -hmm. made it take a big loss, like business. Mm -hmm. So they repurposed it for just location shoots. But it was like an old vintage mechanic shop. And we found that and we shot the video in there. We, yeah, we shot it in LA. Um, I, I linked up with uh, my boy Skate, who is with Taylor Gang and Wiz Khalifa's um, label. And we sort of just made that connection, real organic, real natural, just like everything else. I'm super big on things happen naturally, organically. And um, we sort of just made that connection, did the song. I love the song. The song's super chill. It has a good vibe if you're smoking or chilling, just riding around. And uh, that was sort of how we did it. And I'm just big on making good music. I want to do good music, you know, and go far. And that's what's next, learning how to get better at my craft. Thank you for a great show. Yep. Leaf style, intersection of education, culture, and cannabis. No longer a subculture, a leaf style. Good show. Thanks, yep. Doc. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim, Dr. Lynn. Appreciate the both of you guys so Appreciate much. Appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you.